Hi everyone, it's Jen again, and um, this past week I've just been doing a lot of writing for Otome Jam, so I don't really have anything to talk about or show for my progress this week other than like um, getting up to close to like 50,000 words in my project. Um, so it's been a lot, but I don't really have anything to showcase in this video, so I thought I would go ahead and take this opportunity to answer a YouTube question I got about making animated um, tech, uh, image buttons. So like if you wanted to have something that the player can click on to interact with on the screen and you want that item to also be animated, it's very similar um, my approach to just using image buttons. We are going to still animate our sprites or our um, graphic art. So I have the, I have two different types of animations set up here. I've got um, ATL animation here where I have individual PNG sequences um, uh, just programmed here to be on a 12 frame per second um, repeating cycle um, and then I also have movie sprites here with the WebM files and the transparency masks. So I'm going to show you how I would basically use these um, to create interaction interact interactable um, objects for the player to click on while still having them be animated. It's very similar to how you would put in an idle image and then have that idle image switch out to a hovering image. Except for instead of making it a .jpg or .png, you are just referencing to the animation. So instead of like putting, you know, the sprite.png, we're just going to say this image declaration here. And it's still going to be within the quotations. Um, I'm going to give it an action function that's just going to be a, um, a call function, but you can make this a jump. I just like to use call um, because for a lot of my buttons, I don't want to like interrupt the flow of what has been going on so I've just gotten to the habit of making it a call function but for real project a jump function might work just fine. You can add in a sound for when that activation happens. Um, here I've done that for um, these sprites and the call statement or the function that I'm going to have the action take is to go to this label. Um, in this label, I've swapped out that um, screen image that was that interactable image button screen with the sprite. And I've put that sprite in the same positioning as the screen so that the sprite language and the screen language swap out seamlessly. The player is not going to know that you've kind of switched gears from going from the image button to um, just a sprite display. How does this look like when I open up the game? So let's do the ATL sprites first. I have these as in, uh, separate screens. So this is the currently the idle, idle image. And then when I hover over it, it's switching to the hover image. And again, that hover image is just a sequence of PNGs that I programmed and declared as an image. Now, when I click on them, Behold, it triggers the that activation. It triggers that activation sound, which was that kind of like water splash. And then it went straight into this label here, which was the um, the action that I told it to take when you when the player clicks on it. I hid the screen and then I swapped it out for this sprite of the attack animation. 
and I put that spray in the same positioning as I put um, as I declared the position for my screen to be. I went ahead and I added a voice cue for it. And then once that dialogue has passed, it will hide this sprite and it will show the screen again um, and jump back to my original label. And the script, which is just showing these screens and then waiting for the player to take action. Kneel before me. And I can just kind of do this repeatedly because that's the way I kind of have the same labels to jump back and forth or to to reference each other. And again, you can Behold, just kind of swap Donovan. out. Um, let's see. Now, do you have to swap out it to the sprite? There's some advantages of doing that, but probably not. This is just kind of how I tend to work. Um, if anybody else has any other, you know, suggestions or methods that they use, they can please feel free to share that with the rest of us. If I go into the movie sprites, it's the same thing. Except for instead of having those animations PNG sequence set up, it's just the WebM with the WebM mask. And these I have declared as like the character channels, so you can do that too, where now I have like chat data as the channel. So if I declare any of, or if I go to show any of these other chat data, it'll automatically swap out um, the previous chat data with the new expression. So what that looks like as the image button is again, we just have that declared um, idle animation as the idle image. And then I have swapped out the smile animation for the hover image. So we hover over her, she smiles. And if we click on her, she's going to make a little noise and then she's gonna go to this label here, the chat data label. So on this chat data label, I went ahead and I made like a little interactive menu where she swapped out for her like regular sprite so that I could easily move through expressions based on the character's choice. That looks like here is then when we click on her. Ah. She goes to this um, sprite animation here on the label ask is there anything we can do for you we get the menu options which then her um, her response will change her expression and then I have it jumping back to in the script here just this screen here again where you can interact with or you can click on her I should have made this window hide too, so um, I can go ahead and add that uh, to here just to make sure we're not going to have that weird, rude thing there. So if I refresh, now that window shouldn't be there. Ah. When we interact with her, it'll disappear. Now the other things that we can do to kind of like make this more of like a practical application is I could make like a variable to track how many times we talk to her. So like I could make something like um, default D, D chats or something <laughs> and we'll start at zero. And then for like the, when we talk to her, every time we click on her, we're gonna um, go ahead and add a dchats, like plus, uh, plus one. And then we can make this like, if dchats equals one, she can say this. And then we can say um, like lf, D chats equals two um, she 
you can say something else. To show that she's aware that you keep on talking to her. And then we could have something like, oh, she's she's fed up with you now. that looks like um, when we click on her now ah. is that that's the uh, variable of just talking to her once and now when we click on her again ah. she should have a different response because this is the second time that we've clicked on her and now our D chats is equal to 2 And then we can click on her again, uh, where now our D chats is equal to three, so it's this third option. Uh, and then she'll keep saying that until we program her to do something else. All right, well, this is a short one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some links in kind of like how to do the ATL animation and to my previous video where I talked about how to make movie sprites. Um, if you have any questions about that, but uh, image buttons are pretty simple and pretty powerful. Uh, they open up a whole new avenue of storytelling. Though most of my storytelling in my games are not like just um, jump labels, uh, I guess in like a traditional visual novel sense. Most of the time I like to give my player a little bit more freedom to either um, make choices to go certain locations or to interact with certain characters. So I do end up using a lot of these kind of like jumping around different labels and keeping track of like what the player's choices are through like variables and how often they make those choices so that things don't get too repetitive. And it's, it's a different form of storytelling that I think is unique to, um, to games that you don't get so much in just like, um, I guess it would be like a, a choose your own adventure style like book, which a lot of visual novels sort of emulate. Um, I think it gives you a lot more freedom as a storyteller, um, as well as giving the player a lot more freedom. So I hope that uh, this interests you and maybe opens up a new av avenue for like adding um, a different sort of um, story dialogue navigation for your games. Okay, take care and enjoy the process. Bye!